Hello! And welcome back to the basics of Betaflight. In our last video, we started getting into the configurator and talking about all the tabs. And in fact, we actually went over the setup tab a little bit and some of the features that are available there. Today, we're going to continue to move forward by getting into our ports tab. We're going to talk a little bit about what a UART is and how to configure the options. So I guess with that said, let's plug in our flight controllers and take a look. I'm just going to go ahead and click connect. And by default, when we're connected, we're always going to end up on our setup tab. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on ports so we can go ahead and move forward. Now I'm on my ports and you'll see we have a few options here. Yours might look a little different if you have, well, additional UARTs available, which you may have if you're running an F4 or F7 processor. Uh, those have many more UARTs uh, than this F3 that I'm currently using for these demo purposes. Um, so you could have more. Uh, if you have a F4, the numbers could be different. Same thing with an F7. Uh, typically they stagger the UART ports, so you might have a port 1, a port 3, a port 6. Um, you could even have more ports available. Um, but just be aware that this could vary a little bit and you could have additional UARTs or the numbers could be different. Uh, well, what is a UART? A UART essentially is a serial port. Uh, it allows you to connect a peripheral to your flight controller so the two devices can talk to one another and exchange data. Some of you might be familiar with serial ports back when you were a kid playing with computers, uh, maybe messed around with something like that to get a, a game controller working, for example. Um, this is kind of the modern equivalent of that, and actually so is USB. All of the functionality of these devices, they are very similar in how they work, and it, it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't think we need to get into all the ins and outs of these different protocols, but just be aware that a UART is a serial port, and that's very similar to USB. As a matter of fact, um, USB is used to communicate via a serial port and that's exactly what we're doing with our flight controller i tried to get it closer to the camera but ah, my wire doesn't reach <laughs> all right well anyway that's a brief description of what a uart port is <laughs> let's go back to the configurator and talk about some of our options our UART is always going to have an identifier, and it's going to be identified by a number. Uh, typically, it's going to start at 1 and go up from there. Again, these numbers can vary depending on the type of flight controller that you have. Let's just start with our UART 1, and we'll work our way down as if we're actually configuring this. Now, the first thing that I'm going to point out and mention is probably the most important piece of information in this video. When you see this configuration slash MSP, and this is enabled, even if it's associated with a UART, you cannot turn this off. Essentially what this is, is this is your USB communication to the flight controller. This is what is allowing you to essentially connect your flight controller to the computer. Betaflight has put mechanisms in place to make it more difficult to be able to disable this. However, if you're on an older version of firmware, it is still very possible. I'm just, I'm putting all the emphasis on never, ever, ever turn off configuration over MSP. Um, this is bad news. You'll break your flight controller. It's only software. It can be fixed. But it is an absolute nightmare and a huge pain in the neck. So trust me on this. Do not turn this switch off. Uh, other than that, you're going to have the baud rate. This is the speed at which the flight controller and computer are going to talk to one another. Uh, there's no reason to change this. Actually, as a matter of fact, when you see this configuration MSP switch on, don't touch anything in that row at all. Just don't even touch it. Stay away from it. End of story. There, we're done with that. Don't touch it. We still have a couple of other UARTs to configure. And now we're going to move to UART2 just because it's next in line. Now you can only have the configuration slash MSP enabled on one UART. So you're definitely not going to want to have this enabled on other ports. Also, this is going to be specifically tied to that UART. 
if it's associated with it. So you can't enable it on any others. Just, no, just don't touch this. This is bad. Very bad. Don't touch this. Don't turn it on anywhere else. Bad, 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 bad. Anyway, we're not gonna do anything with this. Uh, Serial RX would be for your receiver. We'll get into that in a second because usually you are at three on F3 and a lot of F4s is going to be your RX port that has to do with uh, inversion with FR Sky protocol and SBUS and all of that. And I don't know, maybe we'll talk a little bit more of that down the road, but just know that's kind of how it is. A lot of flight controllers are going to have a dedicated uh, serial RX input. Uh, specifically for SBUS. But let's go back to two. So we're not going to turn that on here, but we're going to look at some of the other options here that you might actually use UART 2 for. When we look in this column, we can see that we have telemetry output. And if I click on this, this is going to give us all kinds of different telemetry options. And if I'm flying FR Sky and I want to get telemetry back in my controller, say I'm running a Tyrannus, and I want to have battery voltage available on my display. So I would connect it appropriately. I'm gonna click smart port. Uh, and then we just need to pick the baud rate. And this is going to be associated with whatever protocol that you're running. So you're, need, you're gonna to need to be familiar with the protocol in order to be able to select a baud rate. You might be able to get away with auto depending on your peripheral, but I honestly, I don't know. It depends what it is. So follow your instructions um, if you're trying to run telemetry. And, you know, there's info There's a lot of information out there. So, you know, you might have to do a little homework. Uh, next, we have sensor inputs. Um, and these are for onboard sensors in either a GPS or a ESC. Uh, again, GPS I'm not really familiar with. I've never really worked with it. I don't have those answers. But I can tell you ESCs could be something like maybe ESC telemetry in order to get battery voltage or the amount of amps that that particular ESC is currently drawing. Uh, that could be available here. Again, same thing with your baud rate. You're going to need to know how to set this dependent on the type of sensor that you're connecting. Uh, and then in the last column, we have peripherals. Uh, this is for... Pretty much everything other than telemetry or the two sensor input items. Um, this is where you're going to make a connection if you have an external black box logger. Uh, if you're using smart audio or tramp protocol to operate your VTX. Uh, also, if you're doing camera control with a run cam, you know, they have that built right into the new run cams. And they also have that adapter that I did a video on a little while ago. And that thing's pretty awesome. It is really great to be able to change your camera settings out in the field. And I can tell you on a day like today where it's a little overcast, to be able to jump into the OSD and make some setting changes in a few seconds is huge. Um, but anyway, this is where you're going to configure your other devices. Uh, again, your VTX control and to set up uh, external black box logger if you're controlling a run cam camera uh, or even if you're doing LiDAR. Uh, and the same thing, you're going to need to know the baud rate. Uh, some of these devices and their instructions, it's going to actually include this information uh, in the instruction set, right? In the leaflet, in the handout that it comes with. So hopefully, you know, you'll be able to find this info that you're looking for. Uh, and then the last UART, UART 3, uh, at least on this flight controller, is reserved for the receiver. Um, this is an F3 board. It has native inversion. You could really hook the receiver up to any UART. But it is good to know what UART the flight controller is expecting to find the receiver on. Again, you'll find this information in the documentation for the flight controller. Um, but once you know what you are, you need to connect your receiver to, all you do is simply turn on Serial RX, and that's all there is to it. Uh, and you don't need to mess with anything else here. You cannot use the same UART for something like your receiver, and for telemetry, they can't mix and match. And a lot of these other devices... Uh, actually, except for the smart audio, like the run cam needs a full UART, so you couldn't even try to share, you know, the UART with something like a run cam. But just remember, the rule is one device per UART. 
Um, don't mess with configuration over MSP. This is bad news. Remember, you can configure additional peripherals here, uh, whether it's something to do with telemetry, a sensor, or an actual physical device. Uh, and also, we're going to do our receiver here. And really, if you're connecting any modern receiver, you're, you're going to be enabling this in here. Anyway, after you've configured everything to your liking, we just simply hit save and reboot. And the flight controller is going to save and reboot. And after the flight controller has rebooted, we can connect again as normal. Alrighty then, there you have it. There's a rundown on what you're going to do with your ports tab in Betaflight. Hopefully some of this information buried deep within my incoherent ramblings was somewhat helpful, maybe a little bit. If it was, maybe I can convince you to subscribe, maybe you'll click on that like button, and even maybe you'll ring the bell and get more content. But it's time for me to get my button gear. I gotta get to work today. I actually do have to do something for a living, and today is one of those days. So that's it for me. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.